Hey folks, Carl here from the RO Bucket. A lot of people have been asking us um, about the assembly of our kits and uh, generally what that entails and how long it takes to put them together and what, what sort of things you need to do that, like hardware and stuff. So I was going to run you through uh, today a, a kit installation for a RB10 um, from start to finish. So in front of me here I have an RB10 kit as we would ship it in the box. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you uh, when you start putting this together is obviously take it out and check check all your components. Um, you know, make sure everything is in good shape and it didn't get damaged during shipment. Um, what I'm about to go over now for the RB10 kit will be the same for our RB5 through our RB25 kit. Uh, the only difference is that there's additional membranes added on um, in the in the series chain, which I'll talk about a little bit when when we get to that. So what I'm going to do now is just unpack this and um, go through the components quick and uh, the schematics sheet. So these are available online. They, uh, the kits generally also ship with a schematic sheet. So this is going to list everything that's in this box, and th these are obviously all the parts that you're going to be assembling to make this uh, to make this RO kit. So we'll put that off to the side for now. We have our transformer. You're going to get 20 feet of 3 8 inch hose in the 5, 10, and 15 kits. Our larger kits have 25 feet of 3 8 hose because they have additional membranes and it also comes with 10 feet of concentrate hose which is for the discharge. This RB10 kit is going to have two membranes. Uh, these housings already have the membranes installed so the membrane's already in there um, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you'll have another box which has a membrane preservative which you will not use for the installation of the kit. This is just for the end of the season or do a flush to do a flush during the season. So we can put that off to the side. This is our fitting kit. So this is going to have all the fittings listed on our schematic sheet. Um, they're all going to be in here. And there's a couple different ways you can assemble these. There's some elbows and some straights. And you're going to use ones, you know, just depending on how, how you decide to lay it out. I'm going to be putting it on a board today. Um, utilizing both sides of the board. Uh, I like that because when you lift it up it balances kind of nice but if you were to like put it on a wall or something obviously it would all be on one side. You might want to use a different elbow or straight fitting somewhere. Um, so that's kind of up to you. So we'll put those off to the side. It's going to come with two pre-filters. One of them you're going to use right away because it has to go in the pre-filter housing. The other one is a spare so we'll put that off to the side as well. going to come with the booster pump and it is going to come with a water filter housing. So those are all the parts we're going to need for this assembly here today. So let me get myself a little room here. So really the only difficult part um, you're going to have in assembling the kit is really just figuring out what you want to mount it on and prepping that. Um, so if it's a board obviously you're going to want to prep the board ahead of time and uh, you know, maybe round the edges over or make it nice or, or even, you know, stain it or something. Whatever you want to do. If it's on a wall, you can just mount it on the wall. Um, the only additional components you need for the install, <clears throat> like I said, is a place to mount it. And then something to hold the components to the board or wall or whatever you're putting it on. Um, I, I like to use these plastic conduit um, clamps. These are three inch standard conduit clamps that you would get at a hardware store. These work really well. Um, and they fit the they fit the membrane housings and the pre-filter housings really nicely, so you can mount those right to a board. Um, these are again a couple bucks a piece. We don't we don't supply these again. We don't supply anything that people might want to change. So we only supply the RO stuff, uh, the mounting hardware and stuff. Well, everyone uses different stuff, so we we just we don't supply those. And then you're going to need a bunch of screws and stuff. I use uh, just standard one and a half inch deck deck screws and I like to put a little washer on them like a quarter inch washer that way when you hook your conduit clamps on the screw won't go through the hole and it just fits a little bit nicer so that's what I like to use so I have those already prepped I have screws here with washers already on them um, so, so they're ready to go then my drill and I use a tubing cutter um, which you can get at any uh, hardware store but you can also cut this hose with scissors so let's get get ourselves a little space here move some of this stuff off to the side we're not going to be needing right away And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my board out. And I'm going to assemble my pump side first. Um, 
doesn't matter what you do first. But I'm going to put my pump and my transformer and my pre-filter on one side of the board, and then the back side is going to have the membrane housings. And again, this is going to have two membrane housings. I'm actually going to leave room on this so that in the future, if I want to add an additional membrane, um, you know, I can go ahead and do that. It'll be really easy to do. So this is a 24 by 28 inch board. Um, you can go as small as like 16 by 20 by 20 inch. So uh, you can get these pretty pretty down pretty small if you if you want to. So I'm going to get my pump and mount that first. And the first thing I need to do is put the fittings in it. So I'm going to pop these little guys out and thread in my uh, 3 8 inch fittings. So let's go to my fittings bag and get those out. I'll put all these fittings off to the side as well. So you're going to take a black fitting and that's going to go on the inlet side of the pump. The inlet side has an arrow showing which side is the inlet. So I like to put my black fitting on that. You want it pretty snug. You're going to feel the O-ring hit and then just do a little bit do a little bit more on it. And then I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet because after I mount it, I'm going to want that a certain way to make it really easy to use as far as the hose coming out of it. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I can always adjust that a little bit later. And then I'm going to want to put another 3 8 elbow and you want to use a white one on the outlet side. Uh, the reason we use the push fit white one on the outlet side is they generally hold the hose a little bit better. We've had a couple issues where these ferrule fittings, um, people using those on the outlet side, sometimes the hose will pop right out of there if you don't get the collar tight enough. Um, they do work if, if they're assembled right, but these are just a no-nonsense. If it's in there, you know it's good. So I recommend the white fitting over here. If you get in a pinch and you break one or something throughout the season, you could always replace it with the extra black fitting that comes in the kit. So keep that, but just an extra. They work fine if you if you install them right. So I'm going to set my pump down. Uh, let's put this here, and I'm going to put two screws in. I'm going to make sure they don't go obviously go through the board. So I'm going to run them at a little angle because this is three quarter inch plywood, uh, and I'm not even going to tighten them up all the way. So we'll put those in. There's enough room for four uh, screws in your to hold your pump down. You really only need two, but if you want to put all four in, that's perfectly fine too. So now my pump's mounted. Um, it doesn't matter how you orient your pump; it can be sideways, upside down. Uh, it, it's not going to make any difference in terms of the usability of the machine. So whatever whatever works best for you. Next thing we're going to do, let's put our transformer on. The transformer actually comes with mounting tabs, so it makes it really easy to, to put on the board. So we can just set that down next to our pump, and then I'm going to go ahead and screw that in. Again, we don't want it to go through the board, so I always go to a little angle. Or you can get shorter screws, obviously, as well. that. So now I have my pump and my transformer mounted. Now I'm going to mount my pre-filter housing. That's the last thing that's going to go on this side. You might as well put your pre-filter in it so you're ready to go. Unwrap it. There's a little divot in the bottom so make sure that goes right in there. So see there it's not down. Now it is. And then same with the cap. You want to make sure that center thing goes right in the middle of the filter. So I like to just kind of wiggle it a little. And you'll see that it lines up nice and plumb. And then tighten it down. Just hand tight. You'll feel the O-ring kind of grab. Then we need two fittings on this. Again, you can use an elbow or a straight fitting, however you want to set it up. Uh, it's looking like I'm going to come out of my pump and around and into it. So I'm going to put a straight fitting for the inlet. So I'm going to get a quarter inch thread by three eighths inch push fit inlet fitting. And you can get those tight with a plier. Um, you know, don't go crazy with them, but just make sure that they seat. I'm going to leave it loose here because I don't have a plier, but you would just want that O-ring to be tight. Then on the other side, I will use a elbow fitting. So I have a pre-drilled hole. I'm going to come through this board. You'll see in a minute. And again, with these O-ring fittings, you don't need any, uh, you really don't need any um, Teflon tape or anything on them. You just want to tighten them right down and squeeze that O-ring and you're good. So that's in there. I don't. The O-ring is invisible. It's nice and tight. I'm going to mount that right here with one of my 3-inch conduit clamps. So I'm going to put that in there.
screw on each side. Okay. And this is the one side of my board, and it's done. And you can see that this water filter housing, you know, it's not tight in there. You can pick it up when you got to change filters. You can get it right out of there. You know, so you don't want it really, really tight so that you can't. It's hard to change your filter. I'm actually going to lose it up, loosen it up just a little bit. Because there's no reason to have that tight. They're going to be taking that in and out of there a lot. Now on the other side I'm going to mount my, uh, my RO membranes and they're both going to be sitting just like this. So the first one I'm going to put on, it's going to have, uh, they're all going to have three ace elbows on the top. So we can take our three ace elbow with O-ring, thread that right in the top. And again you just want to get those tight. And then once there, you feel that O-ring grab you want to spin it to where you want, to, you want that fitting to go. So I want that fitting to be straight back because I'm going to come right through the board here uh, and you'll see that when I plumb it. And you have a little wiggle room with these because it's an O-ring seal. You got a good 45 degree of movement of where that fitting can be and it's still not going to leak. So you can really put that anywhere you need to. So I'm going to put that there. I need to come out of the concentrate side which is this side with a 3 8 inch uh, hose fitting, quarter inch thread. Thread that right in there. And again, the O-ring is going to tighten right up. You don't have to worry about the, any leaks. And then we're going to come out of the permeate side, which is the middle, with a straight, uh, straight 3 8 fitting quarter inch elbow. And all this is listed on the schematic. And that's going to sit right there. Grab my conduit clamp, screw that down. There you go, we don't got to go real tight on these. Just enough to hold it. You can always tighten it up later if you want to. So there's that one. Then I'm going to put my other one on. And again, we're going to come into this. We're going to come into this one with a 3 ace hose. I don't want this one pointing straight back. I'm going to want this one pointing this way. Because I'm going to come up from this one over. So I'm going to want this one like that. Okay? So I'm going to mount that there put my two fittings on the bottom. This one's going to terminate on a, with a concentrate ho uh, concentrate side. The last one was a 3 8 hose because it was coming up to the next membrane. This is our last membrane. So this is going to terminate to a quarter inch hose because that's where our needle valve is. And this is where we're going to start blocking the system up to get pressure so we can start making uh, pushing that water through. So we're going to terminate with a quarter inch concentrate hose. Permeate again is still going to be that same quarter inch pipe by 3 ace, 3 ace uh, hose fitting. So all the water coming out of this is going to be, get teed together and it's going to come out as a 3 ace hose. And our concentrate is really going to run through the system as a 3 ace and then end up with a quarter inch hose. We'll get that mounted next to the other one. show you what this looks like. We have our pump, transformer, pre-filter housing, plumbed ready to go. We're going to have a hose come through here through this hole I drilled in the board. It's going to come into this membrane right here. Concentrate's going to come out into the top here. Concentrate's going to terminate to a quarter inch line and come out with a needle valve and our permeates, the two waters, are going to be plumbed together. So we're going to plumb that now. I'll try to do it like this so you can see, uh, see how that works. So I'm going to take my 25 foot roll of hose, 20 foot roll of hose in this case, and I'm going to take 5 feet, which I've done this long enough, I know that's my arm span. I'm going to cut that. And this 5 footer, this 5 footer is now my intake hose. So that's going to go in here. Press it up in there. Tighten that collar down. The 
as tight as you can get it with your fingers is what you want on these black fittings. It wouldn't hurt to take a, just a quick little nudge with a with a plier, especially if it's on the pressure side, but on the suction side, it's not, it's really not an issue. If you just get that as tight as you can with your fingers and then make sure it doesn't pull out. The remaining, I'm going to come out of the outlet side, and there's an arrow on the top that tells you that. And we want to press that in, and you'll feel it kind of click in. We're going to bring that right around into my water filter housing. So I need to cut this right here. Now the water, now the sap's going to come into my water filter. Now I need to come out of my water filter, so I'm going to send it through. And you feel it click in. This is going to go right into my RO membrane right here. So I need to cut that to fit. So remember, you don't want to cut it flush with the fitting because it's got to go in about half inch. So you want to leave a little wiggle room there. So I'm going to cut it right about here. And that's going to give me a, a nice little uh, set. So now I can press it back, get it in there, and then see how it's in. Now watch. Boom. Clicks right in. Now I have that plumbed. Now I'm going to want to come out of my concentrate side. Watch it click now. See how it goes in? It goes in about a quarter to half inch once it's fully seated. I'm going to come into this one. Cut it right about here. Again, watch it click in. See? It goes in like this. But that's not in all the way. It's got to go just a little bit more. And now I gotta plumb my concentrate. So let's take a break from this hose for a minute. Get my concentrate out. It's gonna terminate on the concentrate with a quarter inch hose. So this is where your concentrated sap's gonna come out. We have to get a needle valve in there. So it doesn't matter where you put the needle valve, but you need it in there somewhere. So let's cut the hose. And if you look at your needle valve, it'll have a flow directional arrow on it. You wanna make sure you line that up right. Arrow should be pointing towards whatever you're storing your concentrate in. So the arrow's pointing this way. So flip that in. And now you have a 10 foot concentrate discharge. Now we gotta get our water going somewhere. So we're gonna take our remaining hole, uh, roll of hose and we're gonna come out of this one. Bring it over here to this one somewhere. Get pretty close to it. Let's go right there. We're going to put our 3-ace T in, 3-ace T, so we can T this one to this one. So now I need a little piece of hose to hook those together. Let's cut that right there. Hook those two together. Done. And now this is my water outlet. Now I have my water and my concentrate ready to come out. You can cut excess hose if you need it, but I'm just going to leave it hooked up for now. So that is your RB10 kit assembly. That, that's, that's the whole deal. When you're ready to use it, you're just going to plug in your transformer to the pump and then plug in your transformer to a, we recommend a GFI outlet without, uh, you know, as little extension cords as you, as you can uh, get by with, you know, to decrease the risk of electrical shock. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us at sales at throbucket.com. We would love uh, you know, your feedback about this video, and if you'd like any other videos, uh, let us know, and we'd be happy to put one together for you guys. Thanks.